Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Parikshit Lutra and here are the headlines we are tracking this evening. A late recovery lifts the lull streets. Sensex and Nifty end in the green. Mid-cap index ends at a record high for the seventh consecutive session. Prime Minister Modi heads to United States for a state visit, tells the Wall Street Journal there is unprecedented trust between both nations, also says India is not neutral on the Russia-Ukraine war and stands on the side of peace. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is likely to meet Prime Minister Modi during his U.S. visit. Renowned economists, authors and investors are also likely to call on the Prime Minister. Sources say U.S. wants India to join the 14-nation grouping of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework aimed at countering China. LIC holds non-deal roadshows in the United States. The DPM Secretary and the management interact with global investors. Roadshows scheduled in Singapore, UK and Hong Kong next. Indigo places an order for 500 Airbus A320 Neo family aircraft, marks the largest ever purchase by an airline in one go. The CEO tells CNBC TV18 that the order would ensure a steady supply of aircraft till 2035, as that they have a prudent financing strategy. 20 syrups from 15 drug makers in India and Indonesia have been flagged by the WHO for allegedly containing toxic substances. The WHO spokesperson to CNBC TV18 said uh, they cannot reveal the names of the manufacturers and cite ongoing investigations as a reason. The union government steps in after nearly 100 suspected deaths due to the heat wave in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Health Minister says a five member expert team will visit the worst affected states. Families of the victims and experts blame rising temperatures and humidity. The situation in ethnic violence marred Manipur remains tense. The Supreme Court refuses urgent hearing on a plea seeking army protection for Kuki tribals. Says it's a purely law and order issue. Hopes that uh, courts will not be asked to deploy the army or central security forces. A surprise leadership change at China's largest e-commerce company Alibaba. Eddie Wu will succeed Daniel Chong as the new CEO. Chong will now focus on the company's cloud intelligence business. Straight to the day's trading action, the Lal Street made a smart recovery in the second half of today's trading session to end at the day's high. Nifty and Sensex ended a quarter of a percent in the green. Midcap continued to outperform the market. Capitalization of BSC companies rose to a record high of over 293 lakh crore rupees. Prashant Nair is here with the details. Prashant. Well, it was a slow start. The market made the days low earlier on in the day at about 10.30. The low, by the way, today was similar to what we saw last Thursday. But after that, 10.30 to 3 o'clock, it was a slow and steady up move. Slow. 3 o'clock onwards, between 3 and 3.30, it was almost as if the market took off on a rocket because most of the gains that you see on the screen came in that last 30 minutes of trade. Bank Nifty, similar kind of price action, but less pronounced as compared to what we had in the Nifty. Mid cap, small caps. Look good in the morning, afternoon, and by close, they added on a bit more. Indices are up on your screen. Large caps, stocks which did well, Tata Motors, HCL Tekken, HDFC Live. Insurance stocks are coming back after many years of underperformance. The broader market is where bulk of the action has been. And take a look at the kind of names which went up, and it's a really wide basket. Musgaon Dock, HDFC, AMC was a large block. Stock was really the outperformer today. Amber was up 9%. Pyramid Enterprises, Jamna Auto, Shilpa Medicare, Apple, you know, names like Gokul Das have come back above 500. Rate gain is back above 400. These are large movers, Subex, Subros, Rolex Rings, a uh, TVS group company called India Nippon, uh, Bombay Dying, KPI Green, which is having a fantastic month and a year so far. So no dearth of action in the broader mid and small cap part of the universe. And this is the bulk of the volume-led gains that we had. Losses coming through. It's a shorter list of volume laid losses. But Timken, there was a large block at a large discount. Stock was down. Uh, Z, Container Corporation, Max Health, IFL and IFL Securities on the back of New Slow and Kalyan Jewelers were some of the prominent lo lo losers. U.S. markets, of course, will throw up cues. They were shut overnight, but tomorrow morning we'll wake up to them. Markets here are pretty close to all-time highs. I mean, a good open can sort of push us above those levels. Uh, the story, though, I think even though the Nifty may make new highs, remains with what's happening in the broader markets, that is mid caps and small caps. Back to you. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has begun his visit to the United States as part of his maiden state visit to the country. 
The Prime Minister is expected to land at the Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. tonight, where he will be welcomed by members of the Indian diaspora as a part of his tight schedule. The Prime Minister is expected to meet top American CEOs, including Elon Musk. In an exclusive interview to Wall Street Journal, Prime Minister Modi said the ties between India and the United States are stronger and deeper than ever before, asserting that there is an unprecedented trust between the two leaders on the Russia-Ukraine war. The Prime Minister said, and I quote, some people say that we are neutral, but we're not neutral. We're on the side of peace and he has full confidence that India's topmost priority is peace. End of quote. The consolidation of India and U.S.'s defense ties is one of the key highlights of Prime Minister Modi's U.S. visit. Zaka Jacob gets us more on the proposed mega defense deals from New York. Now, one big area of cooperation that has emerged in recent times between India and the United States is in critical emerging technologies. You saw how a few months ago, Jake Sullivan, the US NSA, had come to India and they had agreed upon something called ISET, the Agreement on Critical Emerging Technologies. Sullivan was there last week as well, firming up a big deal under ISET to be announced when the Prime Minister is going to be here this week uh, in New York as well as Washington, D.C. Now, why this has emerged as such a critical area of cooperation is because ever since COVID happened and the world started realizing two factors. One, how much it was dependent on China for its supply chains, particularly when it comes to high-end electronics, uh, smartphones, so on and so forth. And two, that more than 90% of the world's semiconductors were being manufactured by one company, the TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And because of the elevated level of rhetoric, including sometimes military rhetoric that we were seeing uh, from China as far as the Taiwan issue was concerned, suddenly it came to the fore in the last few years that if there were to be uh, some kind of a military confrontation between China and uh, Taiwan, and the United States will have to inevitably get involved, then one area that is going to be very badly affected, or at least has the risk of being badly affected, is that of semiconductors. So India, among other countries, has sensed this opportunity to try and diversify the manufacture of semiconductors. So we're given to understand a big deal is on the anvil as far as manufacture of semiconductors is concerned. Well, uh, the Prime Minister reaches John F. Kennedy Airport in New York tonight. He will have meetings with leading CEOs and thought leaders. Yes, Tesla CEO Elon Musk will be calling on the Prime Minister. Remember, Tesla officials have been holding meetings with Indian government officials in the run-up to Prime Minister's visit to the United States. Whether there will be any outcome as far as manufacturing in India goes, no one knows for now. The other economists and investors to call on the Prime Minister include uh, Professor Nicholas Talib, who's a renowned author of The Black Swan, a financial market analyst as well, Professor Robert Thurman, Padma Awardee and author on Tibetan Buddhism, uh, Professor Paul Roma, Nobel, Nobel laureate and economist, Ray Dalio, American billionaire investor, a very important uh, and well-known face in the United States. Uh, the Prime Minister will also be meeting American astrophysicist Neil Grass Tyson and Indian-American singer and Grammy Award winner, Falguni Shah as well. On Wednesday, Prime Minister participates in the 9th International Yoga Day celebrations at the UN headquarters in New York. This will start at around 5.30 p.m. India time. He will then leave uh, for Washington, D.C. He will receive a ceremonial welcome at Joint Base Andrews in Washington. Thereafter, he attends an event on skilling for the future and then the Prime Minister will hold three very important meetings uh, with the CEOs of Micron, Sanjay Mehrotra. Remember, Micron is considering an investment in India. H. Lawrence Kulp of General Electric, uh, Gary Dickerson of Applied Materials. And the final event for the day, and perhaps the most important, would be private meetings with POTUS and the First Lady at the White House as well. Remember, Micron Technology will announce a $1 billion investment in India. That will... Uh, Come in the joint statement that will be issued by both leaders later this week. There will be a government-to-government -government deal on jet engines, which is a, a multi-billion dollar deal. And there will also be a $3 billion deal for acquisition of 31 Predator drones, which will also be there in the joint statement. between the world's oldest and largest democracies with a special obligation now to demonstrate 
that our governments can deliver for. The most important priority is essentially it is oriented towards the development of the people. Defense remains an area of mutual cooperation. We as Honeywell has interest in that, so we'll certainly support uh, what both governments want to propose forward. It's a matter of pride for all of us simply because both countries can learn a lot from each other. In fact, America can learn so much from India. <laughs> मोदी को सपोर्ट के लिए यहां भी तीन दिन रुकने वाले हैं और मोदी के लिए बहुत सपोर्ट करने वाले हैं And speaking of Prime Minister Modi's visit to the United States, sources have told CNBC TV18 that the U.S. government wants India to join the trade pillar of the Indo-Pacific framework. This is a 14-nation grouping largely aimed at countering China's trade influence. Abhimanyu Sharma joins us now with the details. Abhimanyu, what are your sources telling you? Uh, well, what we have learned from our sources is that uh, the U.S. wants India to join IPF's trade pillar and wants to conclude negotiations on all the pillars by the end of 2023. Though India has said that it is open to examining proposals by the United States, experts have said that India has been reluctant to join IPF's trade pillar to protect local industry and livelihoods in the agricultural sector. India has already joined three pillars of IPF on supply chains, clean economy and fair economy. The U.S. is expected to cite issues like a wide trade balance in India's favour, access to Indian agriculture cultural markets and India's data localization as well as equalization levy norms. On the other hand, India is expected to raise issues of high tariffs on steel and aluminium exports, visas to Indian professionals and IPR in the pharma sector. The India-US bilateral trade has increased by over 7.5% to $128.8 billion in 2022-23, over $120 billion in 2021-22. Uh, so clearly, uh, the US is pegging a lot of hopes as far as IPF is concerned. Uh, but it remains to be seen till what extent India is going to reciprocate the same. Well, uh, definitely, Abhimanyu, while the FTA is no longer a priority for the United States, getting India on board the trade pillar of the IPF is definitely a priority for President Biden. Let's move on. Public sector life insurer LIC held non-deal roadshows in the United States. The event saw DPM secretary and the management interact with global investors. Officials say roadshows are scheduled in Singapore, UK and Hong Kong as well. A quick look now at more headlines. 20 syrups from 15 drug makers in India and Indonesia have been flagged by the WHO for allegedly containing toxic substances. WHO spokesperson refuses to reveal the names of the manufacturers, citing ongoing investigations. The centre has appointed Swaminathan Janki Raman as the Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank for three years. Janaki Raman is currently the Managing Director of the State Bank of India and he will succeed Mahesh Kumar Jain, whose tenure ends on the 22nd of June. Shifting focus to another important story regarding the banking sector, the Reserve Bank of India has issued a clarification after its circular on compromise settlement with willful defaulters kicked up a storm. Ritu Singh is here with more details. Ritu, what was the controversy and how has the RBI responded? Well, if you recall, Parikshit, in the last few days since RBI announced that banks can enter into compromise settlements with fraudulent accounts or willful uh, defaulters, there's been a whole lot of pushback, whether it is from uh, bank unions who have openly written a letter asking RBI to withdraw that rule, and from political leaders like Jairam Ramesh who question why RBI is giving a free hand to willful defaulters by allowing them to reach an agreement with the banks. Now, there's been a clarification coming in from RBI. Firstly, that this, uh, you know, uh, uh, the idea of entering into settlements with willful defaulters is not at all a new regulation. In fact, it has been in practice for the last 15 years at the very least. All RBI has done is brought in more transparency and tightened some of the existing regulations to ensure that at the end of the day, there is better recovery avenues for lenders who are anyway looking at settlements with willful defaulters as per existing rules. So it very clearly says it does not dilute any of the existing rules as far as the penal action for willful full defaulters or fraudulent accounts is concerned. In fact, those guidelines continue to remain applicable in cases where banks enter into compromise settlements with such borrowers. RBI says whether it is, you know, uh, barring such willful defaulters from uh, setting up a new company for a five after a five-year cooling period, not allowing any new bank loans to them as long as they're classified as these accounts, or another five-year cooling period before they can actually avail fresh loans after repaying the full fraudulent account. All of these 
continue to apply. Uh, you know, there was also one of the measures in the new guidelines which said that there would be a minimum cooling period of 12 months uh, after which banks can enter into, uh, you know, compromise settlements with uh, such borrowers. There also RBI has clarified that the existing guidelines which uh, mandate a five-year cooling period for willful defaulters and frauds continues to apply and that was more of a general provision. The idea is uh, to avoid inordinate delays which derodes the value of the asset and enable a faster resolution process and more importantly it brings in more regulatory entities into the fold like cooperative banks that can use these guidelines to ensure that there is faster and better recovery. Right. Uh, thanks very much, Ritu Singh, for joining us with that important story. Let's move on. Sources have said that insurance regulator IRDAI has moved the Supreme Court, challenging the Securities Appellate Tribunal's order in Sahara India life insurance case. Sources informed CNBC TV18. Uh, remember, the SAT had stayed IRDAI's order directing the transfer of policy liabilities along with assets of the Sahara Group firm to SBI Life Insurance Company. Shares of HDFC AMC surged over 7% after Aberdeen Investment Management sold more than 2 crore shares, which is equivalent to 10.2% equity. The shares were sold at over 1,800 rupees per share, which was at a 5% discount to the stock's closing price. The total value of the block deal was a little more than 4,000 crore rupees. IT giant Wipro has announced that the company will kickstart its 12,000 crore rupee share buyback on the 22nd of June and close on the 29th of June. The company has planned to buy back around 27 crore shares, this equivalent to nearly 5% of the total paid-up equity share capital of the company. Time for a short break, but uh, coming up, union government steps in after nearly 100 suspected deaths due to the heat wave in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. More details when we are back. Quick look now at the national headlines we are tracking this evening. The situation ethnic violence marred Manipur remains tense. The Supreme Court has refused urgent hearing on a plea seeking army protection for Kuki tribals. The court has said that it is purely law and order issue and hopes that courts will not be asked to deploy the army or central security forces. Union government has stepped in after nearly 100 suspected deaths due to the heat wave in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Health Minister has said that a five member expert team will visit the worst affected states. Families of the victims and experts have blamed rising temperatures and humidity. We have made two things that we have to राज्य को सहयोग करने के लिए मार्गदर्शन देने के लिए भारत सरकार के ओर से एक डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट आईएमडी और हेल्थ मिनिस्टर के उच्च अधिकारियों की टीम जाएगी और राज्य सरकार को सहयोग करेगी Let's take a look now at all the international headlines of the day. Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba Group has announced a surprise succession plan. The firm's e-commerce executive, Eddie Yong, will uh, be replacing Daniel Zong as the CEO. Executive Vice Chairman Joseph Tsai will succeed Zong and rise to the position of chairman. Meanwhile, Zong will continue to lead Alibaba's cloud intelligence group. China's central bank has cut two key policy rates for the first time in 10 months. This as the Chinese economy has been showing signs of stalling. The one-year loan prime rate was lowered by 10 basis points, while the five-year LPR was cut by the same margin to 4.2%. Most new and outstanding loans in China are based on the one-year LPR, while the five-year rate influences the pricing of mortgages. And staying with news from China, the country's oil imports from Russia jumped to a record high in May. This according to data from the government. China imported 2.29 million barrels per day or a total of 9.7 million metric tons in May. This was a 32.4% increase on a monthly basis. A massive rescue operation is underway in the Atlantic Ocean after a submersible vessel to view the Titanic went missing. Ships and planes from United States and Canada are looking for the submersible vessel, which had four tourists on board and one pilot. The tourists include uh, UK billionaire Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman Shehzada Daud, and his son Suleiman, among others. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Business 360. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 for more news and updates coming up on the other side.